him on down, send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Lord, we're your children, and we are asking for you to send the fire. Our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty. We need to feel your power. And just like the prophet, he said it would be. In the last days, and I pour it, we'd see. So we are waiting, and just a painting. Lord, won't you sing? Your Holy Ghost down. Send him on down. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Yes, send him on down. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Lord, we your children, and we are asking for you to send the fire. Our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty. We need to feel your power. Yeah, just like the prophet, he said it would be. In the last days, and I pour it with see. So we are waiting, anticipating. Lord, won't you see your Holy Ghost down? Send him on down. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down, Lord. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Living, he loved me. Died, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Free me forever. One day he's coming back, oh glorious day. It's living, he loved me. Died, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Free me forever. One day he's coming back, oh glorious day. Yes, send him on down, Lord. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down, Lord, send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down, Lord, send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down, Lord, send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down, Lord, send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down, Lord. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Living, he loved me. Died, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified and freed me forever. One day he's coming back, oh glorious day. Send him on down, Lord. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send him on down, Lord. Send him on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. What we need this morning, we need an unction of the Holy Spirit. We need the reign of God, the glory of God, to fall in the house and in hearts and lives, in this community, in this lost and dying world. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. Well, glory. I tell you, I feel like having church. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness to the house of God. I'm telling you. God is a great God. God is a great God, and this is a great church, a 
great family, and I appreciate you and your faithfulness. Amen. I'm seeing some faces I hadn't seen in a while. I'm glad to see some of you. Amen. Amen. There's been some folks that's been locked up in the COVID jail, you know. And they've been let out, and glory, I know they're ready to have some church. Amen. Praise God. Will glory. Amen. We need to invite the presence of the Lord. Thank you for our guests for coming to be with us today. Let's just worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in this house, O oh God. We ask you, O oh Lord, to lead and direct every word, O oh God, every song. Lord, let it be, O oh Lord Jesus, Lord, covered and, and blessed with the anointing of your spirit. Lord, I pray that you touch and minister to every heart and every life, Lord, that has come to be faithful to you, O oh Lord, and to come to worship you and to glorify, Lord, your precious name. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you would be like you was unto your servant David, that you would hear their cry, hear their voice, receive their worship, O oh God. Lord, we rejoice in you. We magnify you, O oh God. Oh, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. I just feel, let's just lift our hands right now. God is in the place. He's in this place. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Sing that right now. Sing it. Sing your
be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you work through. So you work through. I wanna be more like you. Need you more, more than yesterday. I need you more, more than words to say. I need. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you more. I need you more. More than yesterday. I need you more. Oh, more than words can say. to you today as never before we need you 
God, our nation needs you. Our city needs you. Our church needs you. Every individual in this house needs you more than ever before today. I thank you, God, for your presence in this place today. I thank you, God, that you are moving among your people, oh God. That anywhere that your people gather together in your name and open their hearts to you, you are moving today. I pray, God, for those who need physical and other touches today in their bodies. I pray, God, you will reach down into hospital rooms, into sick rooms, wherever people are who need you. I pray, God, for a mighty outpouring of your grace and your healing. I pray, God, that you will receive us and our praise today, O oh God. Before we leave here today, my soul finds you as their Savior. God, before we leave here today, my heart's be cleansed and purged. Before we leave here today, God, may your Holy Spirit infill people today. Oh, God, touch lives today. Anoint our pastor. God, with a great anointing of your spirit, Lord, receive our worship and our praise today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride united with the groom. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Are you ready? Should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well, don't go away. My home is full of pure stuff I can never see. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the King when He comes. He is coming in power. We hail the blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the King when He comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior, King, Lord of all. For the kingdom of the world shall soon be born before all. And we, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power. We hail the blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. When he comes, he is coming in power. We hail the blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, come, Lord Jesus. Praise God. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. No pain, no death, can in there. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. It's glittering tower, the sun and sun. I feel like traveling on. The heavenly mansion shall be mine. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. 
joy when I think about what he's done for me. He'll get joy when I think about what he's done for me. get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. get joy when I think about what he's done for me. He'll get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Well, what is done yeah. for me, what the Lord has done for me. Oh, now you don't know, you don't know. What is done for no, me. Oh, no, you don't know, you don't know. What is done for oh, me. Oh, no, you don't know, you don't know. What is done for me, what the Lord has done for me. Well, he saved my soul and he set my spirit free. All right. He's healed my body and he gave me liberty. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He's coming back for me. That's what the Lord has done for me. Oh, get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Oh, get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. What is done for me? Yeah, get joy when I think about what is done for me. Yeah, get joy when I think about what is done for me. What the Lord has done for me. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Will the hold the devil had on me? He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Living by the hands of the Lord. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. With the hold the devil had on me. He ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Living by the hand of the Lord. Will he save someone? I know this close in death. That's right. Yes, he gave a little boy with eyes on my back is bread. Oh, for the greatest miracle to see when from sin is set you free. When Jesus set you free, you know you're free indeed. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Where the hold the devil had on me, he ain't got no more. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Living by the hand of the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. Have you been delivered and set free, sanctified, filled with the Spirit on your way to heaven? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm on my way to heaven. Praise the Lord. How many knows it's all right to have backwards church every now and then? We kind of had a little backwards this morning, didn't we? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me get rid of this. Praise the Lord. Before we go any further, remember tonight, communion and prayer. Communion and prayer. And prayer starts at 6 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God hath said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I want to call your attention to verse 17. 
It says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject, be ye separate, be ye separate. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege to minister your word in this place today. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd let your Holy Spirit, Lord, minister, Lord, your anointing, your glory, and your power, Lord, fall upon the messenger. Let me speak, O Lord, only words that are directed by your Spirit. Lord, let me, O Lord, minister in your anointing and your glory. Lord, let that fire, O God of Pentecost, fall upon us as we minister, Lord, to open our hearts that we might receive your word and receive instruction, O God. Let this word be a plumb line, a measuring tool, Lord, to help us, O God, to, Lord, examine our hearts and our lives. And I pray, God, that before we leave this place this morning, that we will examine our motives, O oh God. We would examine our ways, O oh Lord Jesus. And Lord, we would turn to you, O oh God, to be as you have chosen for us to be. Lord, I pray that you touch somebody's heart and somebody's life in this place today. And we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Will glory. Amen. Backwards church. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Shake it up a little bit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Wherefore come out from among them. Be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You know, I've been noticing a lot of the minutes, a lot of the word that the Lord has been sharing with us throughout the beginning of this year. And you know, these words are are words that will measure us. These are these words will, amen, it will be a plumb line to way we can examine our hearts and our lives. And and as we uh, recognize any situation or things in our lives that may not be pleasing to God, then we come to the altar of God. We come in His presence, in His glory, and cry out to Him as David would cry from the pit. And He hears our prayers. He forgives our sins. He cleanses us and sets us on the right path. Amen. We know his word said that if everything is falling apart, this is paraphrasing, if everything's falling apart and you work hard and just seem to can't achieve any money in the bank, it's like your bags have holes in it. Amen. You, you do this and you do that and just seem like you can't get ahead. Then we have the word of God, the plumb line, the measure, and the Lord calls us and says, come back to me. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Glory to God. There's been times in my life, Kim, I've had to cry out to God, amen, for him to heal my land, to heal my land and forgive my motives, forgive the way I was doing or presenting myself to others. Amen. Sometimes we just need to do a checkup from the neck up. Amen. We just need to examine ourselves and, and wake up sometimes. Amen. But then the Word of God this morning. Amen. We, were, we realized that we were all born into this world having the nature to follow the sins of the world. It was our nature to follow the crowd, to be the life of the party, trying to fit in to a crowd that we were not chosen to be a part of. Amen. The Bible says that he knows and he's ordered our steps. He knew us from our mother's womb. God knew us from the very beginning of time. God has chosen. He has called. He has
has wooed us, amen, into the, into the family of God. And then as we accept him as Lord and Savior, we became heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. But when we are running away from God, when we're not listening to his voice, when we're still out there in the world doing our thing and being tore up, amen, from the floor up and doing all this, amen, things of the world, we are not operating in the will of God. And so we're, we're really out of order. We're, we're messed up amen because God knew us from the beginning we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works amen God amen has foreordained your steps and foreordained the purpose and the plan for your life and you will be messed up until you submit and humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God because you're living a life amen that is not yours you're living a life that was not, amen, yours, amen, because God has called you and he's chosen you to be a priest, amen, a king, a son, and a daughter of the Lord. Amen. We were misfits, amen, before we were saved. Misfits living unnatural lives, not being who we were chosen to be. And it, it, it don't work most of the time. We end up being alcoholics or in drug addictions, messed up marital affairs, and just can't seem to do anything right or make anything work because we have been chosen chosen by God to be the sons and the daughters of the Most High God, chosen to live for him and with him. Oh, I think about Abraham. Amen. We, as Abraham in Genesis 12 and 1, it says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, he said, Get thee out of the country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee, and I will make thee of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You you see, Abram was chosen by God to follow him. The Lord promised Abram that he would, be, he would bless him and make him a great nation. And notice this, and as thou shalt be blessed, and thou shalt be blessed. As we hear the voice of God, as we follow the will of God, as we submit to the Lord, and God anoints us and blesses us, we grow in wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the Lord, and we take Take our rightful place in the purpose and the plan of God, then we become a blessing, not only to ourselves, not only to our families, but we become a blessing, uh, become a blessing to the community, a blessing to the state, and a blessing to the world. God wants to use you to bless others, and the only way he can do that is we have to align ourselves in the will of God, in the spirit of God, in the the glory of God so that he can speak to our hearts and speak through our hearts into the lives of others. Listen, your stand, your witness, amen, your devotion, your faithfulness to God, it ministers to this lost and dying world. Your neighbor sees your car pull out every Sunday morning. Your neighbor sees, amen, when they drive by the church and sees your car here. They know what's going on. They think you're up in this Pentecostal church swinging from the chandeliers glory to God they think you're running the back of the pews amen and rolling and falling out amen glory to God amen but listen your faithfulness to God ministers to others and you become a blessing to those hallelujah Oh, it says that God would bless him and make him a great nation, and he would become a blessing to others. But there was a condition. He had to separate himself from his homeland. He had to leave his old life behind and follow God. He had to leave some things behind. How many have ever watched uh, 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 NASA when they would go to the moon? Amen. That rocket takes off. I mean, that's a big old rocket. That thing's big. It's way up in the air. It takes off. Amen. And it goes and it goes and it goes. And then all of a sudden, something breaks off. Amen. Something, amen, falls off. And then it keeps going higher and higher. And the higher it gets, 
the more falls off until there's just a little capsule that's left. Listen, saints, the higher we get in the Lord, the higher we get in the glory of God, there's going to have to be some things fall off. There's going to have to be some things, amen, brushed off and rubbed off and, and smoothed out, glory to God. There's some baggage that we need to leave behind. And the only way we do that is come to the altar of God, get in the Word of God, and leave your cares and, and your, your burdens and give them to God. Oh, I heard this story. Parson Grant told me one time. He said there was a gentleman walking down the road, and this gentleman had two big suitcases. And I mean, he was way it down and just struggling to get down the road and and this guy was in a pickup truck and he pulls up and he said hey buddy he said you need a ride he said yeah he said yeah give me a ride he crawled up in the back of the truck and Jordan he done something crazy he got in the truck he stood in the middle of the bed and kept holding his bags amen he kept holding those bags he had him a ride but he was still going to hold his burden he was still going to hold on to his weight hey man the guy that was driving the truck looked back and said hey buddy won't you put your burden down won't you put them down and just enjoy the ride he said no they're my burdens and I'm going to carry them hey man Listen, saints, amen, we let to let some things fall off. We got to let some things, amen, diminish in our lives. We need to clean up ourselves and get ready because one day, glory to God, the Bible said the trumpet's going to sound. Amen, glory to God, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we who are alive and remain shall rise to meet them and join and be with our Lord, amen, forever and ever. Listen, I don't want no baggage holding me down. I don't want no old burden of this old lost and dying world holding me down. But I want to be set free, glory to God, that I can fly, amen, with the Lord, amen, eternally. Would you give him praise here today? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. You see, amen, we've been called out. Amen, we've been chosen, just like Abram, glory to God. And we have to leave this world behind. We have to come and separate ourselves from the things of this world. Hallelujah. And follow the Lord. We've been called to separate ourselves. Amen. From the crowd and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at the word separ separate. Separate. Amen. This word can be used as an adjective or it can be used as a verb. You see, as an adjective, it means set apart. It means distinct. It means not related. We know that an adjective is a word or a phrase that names an attribute. It names an attribute. It modifies or it describes something or someone. That's an adjective. Amen. That person's set apart. That person over there, amen, is distinct. That person over there, amen, is, amen, separated. Amen. Listen, amen, how many know that we are saved and the Lord has set us apart from our sins? We've become distinct, a new cre creation in Christ Jesus, no longer related to the old man, amen, we used to be no longer related to this lost and dying world and the sins of the past. Amen. We've been separated. Hallelujah. And then the word separation or separate can also be used as a verb, meaning to set apart, to distinguish, or to divide. You see, a verb is a word that describes an action taken, an action taken or an occurrence. Something took place, amen, to cause this person to be separate. In other words, amen, after we're saved and God sets us apart, distinguishes us, and removes our relationship from the old man and the things of, of Satan and the things of this world, amen, this then we, we take action, amen, and separate ourselves. We set ourselves apart, and we become distinct, 
different and divide our lives from the sins of the old man. The Word of God says that we are to put off the old man of sin and put on the new man that is created in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. You see, salvation is free. Salvation is, amen, something as we put our faith in the provision that Jesus Christ had done over 2,000 years ago. And as we come and give our heart and life to the Lord, then he forgives us of our sins. He cleanses us of all unrighteousness. He makes us a new creature in Christ Jesus. And when we get up from that altar, after receiving him as Lord in our life, we get up and we are completely justified. We're completely cleansed. We're completely brand new. Hallelujah. Glory. And then we have to go to work. Then we have to separate ourselves from the old, separate ourselves from the dance hall, separate ourselves from the bar room, Se separate ourselves from the liquor store, separate ourselves from the old man, the old deeds, the old ways. Hallelujah. We have to do some of the work ourselves. Hallelujah. Glory. God says, be ye separate. Come out from among them. Amen. And let's stand in holiness and righteousness. Righteousness, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. We take this action. We separate ourselves from the deeds of the world. We come out of the crowd and we begin to follow, amen, the word and the will of the Lord. And within, amen, we come out from among them and are separated. Amen, we are become different. We, be, we become holy and righteous unto God. Listen, I know that in ourselves we'll never achieve that. In ourselves we'll never make it on our own. Amen, but when God looks at us, now he looks at us through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He looks at us through grace and mercy of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And we become not only sons and daughters of the Most High God, but we become his righteousness created in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, listen. Amen. Wife, look at your hub, husband and say, you are righteous. Come on now. I know that's hard for you to do. It's hard for us to look at somebody else and say, Whoa, you are righteous. Amen. You are righteous. Amen. But listen, when God looks at us through the perfect, sinless, spotless blood of Jesus Christ, that we have accepted that provision and that blessing, hallelujah, then from that moment on, God looks at us as righteousness, His righteousness, not created in ourselves, but created in Christ Jesus. Woo, that's some good stuff. Hallelujah. You ought to be able to rear your head back and say, well, praise God. I'm righteous, not by works, but by his spirit and his blessing. Hallelujah. So we're not to be like the world. We're not to be a sour puss or Miss Doubtfire. Amen. We, we need to check up. Amen. Stop nagging and whining and don't become bitter. Amen. You can't win the lost. Amen. You can't win the lost being like them. Amen. You've got to be different. You've got to be different. They've got to see something real in your life. Something real in your life. But we are to be the light of God. Amen. That God shines through us. That we become a blessing. And we spread cheer. We spread blessing. We pray. We, we help one another. We encourage one another. Amen. And as we begin to uh, act like we're a Christian, act like we're righteous, act like we're the head and not the tail, act like we're blessed coming in and going out, then we'll realize, amen, that we are saved. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you need to act like it before you start feeling it. Amen. Act like it. In other words, read your Bible. Act like you're saved. Pray. Act like it. The Bible said that Jesus, listen, you say, now, preacher, you're, you're getting over in that performing stuff, that, that acting and that performing stuff. Well, the Bible says Jesus descended down into hell, and what did he do? He acted like he was a son of God. 
He made a show of the power of God in the middle of hell. Hallelujah. You need to act like you're anointed. You need to act like you're saved. Glory to God. Amen. And the more you act like it, amen, the more you'll feel like it. Glory to God. Be separated. Be righteous. Amen. Before, amen, men. Glory. We too have been given everything. We've been given everything. Hey, I, I was thinking about this the other day. Amen. My, my wife, she ordered, a, or her sister gave her a new headboard for our spare room. This, this hair, he, uh, headboard, it came in a box with a million pieces. I mean, every little slat, every little bar, every little thing to put on the bottom of it. And then not only did, well, you know, when she got the headboard, you know what she had to do. Then she ordered a platform. Amen. Then she got a new platform. She said, well, I'll just get another mattress, too, to go on it. So all this stuff comes in. Amen. Alan, and here I am, you know, I'm a preacher. I ain't no mechanic. I, I'm not like Chris Klein. I mean, he can do anything, you know. I'm not like that. Amen. That stuff come in, and, and I started opening them boxes and pouring it all out there. And I mean, screws and washers are flying everywhere. And amen, all these bars and pieces are coming out. Amen. Out, it was coming out from among it. Amen. It was falling out there. And then, then I looked over there, and there were some tools that even, amen, started falling out. And, and, and so everything, I, I, I took everything, I took those tools, I took all that stuff, and I got on the instructions, and I read them instructions, and, and I'm not like I used to be. I'm not as hard-headed and bull-headed as I used to be. In other words, I read the instructions, and I, I went step by step. Look at them women. Look at them women. <laughs> The women are clapping. I went step by step with those instructions, and it wasn't long, Brother Doug. Amen. I stepped back and say, voila. <laughs> hey. Then I had to take it back apart where I carried it back in the room. <laughs> but I got it all together. Amen. My point is everything I needed was in the box. Everything I needed was in the box. Amen. We too have been given everything we need to live this Christian life. But there's some assembly required. Amen. We have to read the instructions. We have to use the tool that's been supplied. And that's the only way that we can live a separated life. You see, a lot of ministers, I mean, preach on separation. A lot of ministers, I've heard a lot of preaching on separation coming out from among them and be ye separate. But what we need to hear is how to be separated, right. how to come out from among them, how to be different. Amen. I'm not talking about, amen, doing away with all of your friends. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about coming out from among their ways, amen, the ways of the, of the world, the sins of the past, coming out from among all of this stuff, amen. And God has given us everything we need, amen. You see, we don't have to isolate ourselves, but we do need to insulate ourselves. Don't isolate yourself, but insulate yourself with the tool that's been given to us in the box. And that is the Word of God. Insulate yourself with the Word of God. The Word of God renews our mind. It changes in the way we think. It measures us. It molds us into the image of Christ. The Word of God separates us and sets us apart. It distinguishes us and it divides us from sinful ways and thoughts of the old man. It gives us direction and instruction for separation. Hallelujah. You know, we, we are to be separated, but sometimes we just don't know how. Amen. But we do this by reading and studying the Word of God. And then, get God, then go to the Lord in prayer and allow Him to speak through to us and we, that we might receive a word of, from God, a word from the Lord. You see, Abram, hey man, he got a word from God. 
He got a word from God and he was successful in his life because he built an altar. He went and sought God. And he, amen, came into the presence of God. And God, amen, cut a covenant with him and gave him promises and blessing. Amen, blessed his life. Abram went to God and got a word from God. But look at Lot. Lot went to his uncle and got a word from his uncle. See the difference? Amen. Abraham sought God. Abraham sought and received word from God. But Lot got a, wa a word from his uncle. Getting the word from God, amen, is, 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 will take you, amen, from now, amen, through eternity. It will keep you. It will hold you. I'm telling you, God has spoke things into my heart that was just very simple, but it gave me power. It gave me strength. It gave me the anointing to stand in boldness against opposition and fight the fight of faith. Glory to God. Amen. I remember one time, I know I've told you this before because I've been your pastor for almost 10 years, or going on 10 years. But I, 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 was, I was praying one day. I used to be real timid. I used to be real uh, 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 just backwards, you know, and I, when I'd sing, I'd get behind the piano and bury my head in, the, in a songbook, and I didn't want anybody looking at me, or I didn't want to look at nobody. And so I was really timid, really scared, and, 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 and uh, scared. And a frightened and all that. But the Lord it was calling me to the ministry, and I knew he was. And so I knew that I'm going to have to come out of this. Something's got to change, Benny. Something's got to break. And so I began to cry. I started fasting and crying out to God. I buried my head in that couch, and I prayed, amen, and sought God. And I remember, amen, way in the wee hours of the morning, or in the way up there, it's still dark. God spoke to my heart, and this is all he said. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Brother Clarence, then I realize, amen, that he's already been provided. He's already made a way. Glory to God. It's kind of like, amen, my grace is sufficient, boy. Amen. In other words, I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. All you got to do is just see, receive the provision that's been provided through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And listen, it turned me upside down. It just set me free, glory to God. And I was able, amen, to get on the platform and sing and preach and dance and worship and run for God. Amen. Shout for the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, one word from God will turn you loose and set you free. So the, word, the tool of separation is the Word of God. The tool of separation. Hallelujah. You see, a lot of people are living their Christian lives on the Word they've gotten from their mama. Amen. From their daddy. From the preacher. But listen, it'll only carry you so far. There's going to be a time in your life when you find yourself in the pit, a time in your life, you'll find yourself being tempted, amen, amen, by sin. A time in your life that you're in prison and mama's nowhere around, daddy's nowhere around, and the preacher's at the coffee shop drinking coffee, amen. And you need a word from God. You need to call the Lord. Let him give you a word, one word from God will take you through the battles. It'll give you stickability, steadfastness, and make you unmovable. You need to get a word from the Lord and continue to be faithful, amen, to His all that He's given you to do. I'm telling you, we got to remain faithful. Remain faithful to the bottom body of Christ. Remain faithful to our brothers and sisters in Christ. In other words, don't miss church. Don't miss prayer meeting. Make the house of God a priority. Put God first, family second, church third, and self last. Amen. When you do this, then you'll find yourself on the blessing side of life. Matthew 6 and 33 in the com in, uh, contemporary English version. It says, but more than anything else, put God's work first and do what he wants. Then 
the other things will be yours as well. In other words, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things shall be added unto you. You see, if you want to be blessed, if you want your children to be blessed, if you need help in any area in life, amen, put God first. Put your life, amen, put uh, first in your life, first in your family, first in your finances, first in your time. Proverbs 29 and 13 says, where, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You see, if we have no vision, we die. Commit to God's inspired vision and run after it. Run toward it. Amen. Get, run to the will of God and the ways of the Lord. And when we fail to seek God for vision, we, we begin to decline. Amen. And die spiritually. Don't separate yourself from the family of God. Don't isolate yourself from church, but insulate yourself with the church family. Amen. You are strengthened and encouraged as we assemble and as we worship and God, amen, with his divine visitation falls upon us. See, Lot separated himself from the very thing that he should have been holding on to. He was blessed as long as he was with his uncle Abram. It would have been better for Lot to say, Uncle Abram, you can have all my cattle. You can have all my herds. You can have everything I've got. Just let me live and be in the blessing that God is pouring out for you. Glory to God. I want you to know the things of this world are not important. Amen. The things that we see, the things that we strive so hard, amen, to achieve and to accumulate, it's rusting away. It's dissolving before for our eyes but there's one thing that's going to last eternity and that is the glory of God the blessing of God the provisions of the Lord God is faithful and he is eternal glory to God hallelujah Woo! hallelujah glory amen don't isolate yourself from the things of God insulate yourself get ready hallelujah how many knows that, amen, when that snow was coming? We knew it was coming because Sister Jimmy was praying for it. It was coming. Amen. So what did people do? They got ready. They got ready. I'm telling you, every loaf of bread, every hamburger bun, hot dog bun, every roll, it was one of them old nasty frozen biscuit things. <laughs> Every one of them was gone. People was preparing. Amen. I had me four propane bottles ready, full of propane, my, in case my lights went out. I was ready. Glory. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. Insulate yourselves. Glory to God. Lot find himself. Living in, the, living in the very thing he should have been separated from. Hallelujah. People have been drowned by trying to save others. They've been drowned by trying to save others. You see, in other words, you can do more for the lost on the outside than you can on the inside. Making your stand of righteousness. Making your stand of holiness. I'm not, I'm not saying shun them, mistreat them, or not be friendly with them. I'm not saying that. But listen, Lot, he pitched his tent towards Sodom. He didn't go in Sodom at first. He just pitched his tent towards Sodom. But next thing you know, he was in the middle of Sodom. And in the middle of Sodom, he lost his integrity. He lost his witness. He lost his testimony. You can do more for the kingdom of God and for the lost. S separating yourself. Girding yourself with the word of God. Insulating yourself with the presence and the word of God. Making a stand for righteousness. Glory to God. We've got to come out from among them and be separate. Be different. Amen. Amen. We was talking just a moment ago. Amen. There's some churches, they seem like they have to be like the world 
They think they have to be like the world to minister to the world. They don't want to offend anybody. And so now they've got churches. I'm not getting on a soapbox here. But they got churches as soon as they, I mean, you know, you can see. You can walk around, see faces, you can shake hands. But when church starts, they turn the lights out. You can't see nothing. And they got the disco ball and all that. They got all that. And what happens is the sinner that's needing help, that's hungry and thirsty, they come to church and then they leave and they say, well, that's just like the club I go to at night. Be different. Be different. Hallelujah. I'm not saying be hypocritical. Be real. Be anointed. Be full of the glory of God, the presence of God. And you'll find yourself, as you have separated yourself from the crowd, you'll find later, as those that are in the crowd are hurting, those that are in the crowd realize they need help. One by one, they come out of the crowd and they say, Brother Keith, will you pray for me? My family, we're having a mess in my family. Be separate. Be different. Be set apart. Amen. God wants to use us to minister to hearts and lives. We are to come out from among them and be separate. Be different than this world. Be holy, godly, and righteous. When sinners come to church, amen, they're looking for God. They're looking for truth. That's what they need is truth. Amen. They're looking for truth. Hallelujah. Leviticus 15 and 31, I'm closing, says, Leviticus 15 and 31 says, Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. He told them to separate yourself, cleanse yourself, prepare yourself. Ezra 10 and 11 says, Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. 1 Peter 1 and 14 says, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy for I am holy. See, we're not, we are not of sin any longer. We're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. Our sins have been washed away, and God has given us the blessing that we might be dead to sin, dead to sin, and alive to righteousness and blessing and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep our hearts right with God. Amen. Use the tool that he's given you. Get a word from God. Amen. I'm telling you, if you will get on your face before God and get sincere with the Lord, amen, you may have to fast. You may have to humble yourself. But if you'll get sincere with God, He will give you a word. He will speak to your heart. Not mama's heart and then to you, but to your heart. And that word, that tool, is enough to keep you separated from the things of this world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God thinks enough of me to speak to my heart. God the creator of all this universe has spoke to my heart. I'm not talking about like an audible voice. God does do that. He, he can if he wants to. I'm not talking about that. But it's like when you're praying and you're seeking God 
and all of a sudden there's a something comes into your spirit and all of a sudden it just rejuvenates and you can't get your mind off of it but it's there it's there amen and you know then it was from God you know it was from God it's kind of like a dream you know uh, uh, young men see visions old men see dreams or uh, uh, well I don't know about Pastor Roger but I'm beginning to dream I'm beginning to have dreams and in my dream amen I have all kind of weird dreams you know if you eat turnip greens or whatever you done whatever you have these wild dreams but sometimes you have a dream and it may seem wild but all of a sudden in the next morning and you're praying you can't get the dream off your mind when you get the Word of God and you start reading the Word of God, you can't get the dream off your mind. God speak to you. God speaking to us. Listen, use the tool that God has given you. Get in the Word of God. We need to have a revival in reading the Word of God. A revival in prayer. God wants to use us. And the only way He can use us is we got to shun, shun the very appearance of evil. Listen, shunning the appearance of evil is not really for you. It's for your, your granddaughter that hadn't accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. It's for your grand, great grandkids that is living in the world. They're hurting. They're messed up. They need you to shun the very appearance of evil. They don't need you to look like you've even done anything to sin. Shun it. Separate yourself. Call it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Call it out. Listen, young man. You play with dirt, you're going to get dirty. If, 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 if little Billy Bob, if he jumped off a mountain, would you jump off too? We've all heard those. We've heard those. Shun the appearance of evil. Walk holy, walk righteous. Let's be a witness for the kingdom of God. Amen? Praise God. Would you stand? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God.